In this video, I want to show you how you can set up the native Apple Health Kit inside of your lovable mobile application. It's actually surprisingly simple and quick. So let's take a look at this. So HealthKit essentially allows our application to read and write all the health data that is stored in the user's health app and that comes from their connected devices, such as their Apple Watch or their other health trackers even a smart scale if you want. So this is really cool and there's so much that you can do with it. You can read and write the health data, you can take the health data and plug it into an AI or you can show charts and trends and analytics about how their health is changing when they do certain things. It's really powerful. So how do we get this into Lovable? It's very simple because Despia now actually provides a native integration for HealthKit made for lovable mobile applications. Now, considering you already have your lovable mobile application configured and all set up with Despia, which I will assume in this video. So considering that we already have it connected, here's what we need to do. We need to go to add-ons inside of Despia. We need to go to hard code it. And now we need to go to health data. Make sure that you turn health data on. Now, after turning on health data, we go on publish app, don't publish it yet. Copy the app bundle ID. Go into Apple Developer, click on your account. This is developer.apple.com as you can see here, slash account. Open your account and now we will go to the identifiers in your account. Go to certificates, IDs and profiles. Go on identifiers here, it's very simple. And now inside of identifiers, we're just going to look for our core bundle ID. So let's click on search here, paste our core bundle ID. And as you can see, my core bundle ID is right inside of here. It's the one that matches the search query. Select this one. And now we need to make sure that HealthKit is on. Spoiler, I already have enabled it, but in your example, you will need to make sure that it is enabled. So let's look for health. As you can see, I already have it on, but let's turn them off. Zoom in a little bit, actually. And we need to make sure that they are turned on just like this. Then you can go on safe and confirm. If they're not on, it will not work. So it's actually very important that you follow the step. So now we're done with Apple Developer, we can close those tabs. Now inside of Despia, after we turned on health data and we enabled the capabilities in the core bundle ID here, we need to rebuild our application. This is required because it adds a lot of native code in addition to your existing native code. And you can't just add code over the air to an application. You need to rebuild for that purpose because, you know, it has to do with security and compliance and all that kind of stuff. So let's rebuild our application. Now I'm cheating a little bit because I already have one prepared so I can just do a very quick cut. But in the meantime, while this is all getting set up here, we can now implement this functionality inside of Lovable. So inside of here, we can go to lovable.despia.com and get the Apple HealthKit documentation with the prompt. Just quickly how the prompt works, as always, we're importing the Despia native SDK. We're, um, you know, importing it here through those steps, first installing it and then importing it. And then we can use those methods. In this example here, we can read the health data and we will then get a response just like this with all the native identifiers and the values inside of those identifiers for each day. You can say, give it for me, you know, for the last 10 years, the last 20 years, the last year, the last 10 days, you will get exactly the date and the value and the unit. Now, if it's zero, it doesn't mean that they have a zero heart rate. It means that it's not available, just FYI. So don't please show them that they have a zero heart rate. Um, because if they don't have an Apple Watch, there's no heart rate on their health app, right? And then you can also update the health values, which I would suggest to be careful with, but you can do that. Now, please don't adjust your heart rate to 1,800, but you can read and write in this example here, any health value. And then you will get the links here for all the identifiers. So to set this up in Lovable, let's just copy the entire prompt. And now we can just paste this prompt into Lovable. And say in here, make a health 
data app with charts and graphs for the steps I walked only. Okay, so in this example, we're only doing the steps, but you can customize the application as much as you want. You can make an application for the heart rate, for their blood pressure, for their blood oxygen, for all the health values combined to create a health score. You can take the data, send it to your backend, considering the user consents and your backend is HIPAA compliant. Or you can just keep the data client side because the way the Despia SDK is designed is you don't have to send this data to your database. You don't have to send this data to your backend. Running this request here happens in record time. You're getting the health values immediately and you get it in a JSON format, which is already optimized to be turned into a calendar, uh, to be turned into a calendar. That was weird pronunciation of calendar to be turned into a calendar, to be turned into a graph, to be turned into a metric. It's already structured data. You can take this and send it into an AI model client side without storing it. Of course, you should proxy it through your backend to make sure the user is authenticated, but you don't have to store the user's health data because your phone or the user's phone will actually work as a database kind of like to give you access to this health data into a format that looks similar to something that you would load from your backend, that you would load from an API. So it's essentially a local API to access the health data. So you do not have to store it unless you need it for weekly health update emails or something. So it's already optimized to be as compliant as possible and to give you all the tools and all the mechanisms to build compliant health applications. Now, if it's compliant or not, it's always up to you. Now, you could take this data and send it to a server somewhere that nobody knows what's happening to it. So this is up to you, but it gives you all the tools that you need to build compliant health applications and manage the health data locally if you want without having to getting a backend or third party services involved, which is really cool. So now as you can see, we get this beautiful setup here to just get the step count. This is the native identifier that you can find in the um, documentation from Apple. If you go into our documentation, you can just go on those links here and you will find all the native identifiers that Apple supports, right? Which is really cool and really convenient to set up. So now this application is already set up as it seems. So let's publish this here and let's update this. You can see here. And now the nice thing also with Despia is we have updates over the air. What does that mean? That means that you can make this change to your application and how HealthKit works over the air without having to rebuild the entire application, wait hours or days for Apple to approve the changes. You can push those updates immediately to the store. And the best part, it's 100% compliant with the store guidelines because Apple allows over the air updates so you can fix critical issues and bug fixes just like this without having to have an app hours broken on the store, which is always very important when you're working with AI, right? So let's take a look at how this actually works, that it is updated. Now, I want to consider you need to wait till this build is successfully done because we need to make sure that HealthKit is actually added as a native capability. But as mentioned, I did cheat a little bit for this video because I already have a build on my phone that has it included. So for me, it's now over the air as an update. You would have to wait till you get an email from TestFlight to install the latest version if you haven't had it enabled yet. But in this example, let's take a look at this. Let's open the application. And as you can see, we will now have the new interface inside of here to read the health data. Of course, the safe areas are off. I haven't implemented native safe areas here, but this video is not about native safe areas. It's about native health access. So if your application looks funky, refer to our safe area documentation. So let's do it for the last 30 days, my steps. Let's fetch the data. As you can see, it now opens the native HealthKit modal. How cool is that? I can enable access to the steps and let's allow it. Now, as you can see, it's loading the data 
and I'm getting the total steps I walked, my daily average, my best day, I'm getting this beautiful chart here, visualizing my steps, I'm getting my daily steps here in this beautiful analysis, and you can do this with all health values. You can read multiple at a time, it's really powerful and really cool what you can do with it. How cool is this? So this is how you can access your native user health data securely and safely, fully client side, fully on device, unless you send it to your backend, but that would be an effort that you would have to do. Out of the box, it's fully compliant, fully safe. The data stays on the device, but it gives it to you instantly in a format that's simple to use and convenient. It's already looking like something that would come from your database. So very cool, out of the box, and you can build exciting health applications that access the real native health data just like this. How cool is that? You can say the last seven days, you can fetch the data, you will see then how some of the data updates. 14 days, you will see how the data changes now to 14 days, there's less um, data here. Seven days, 14 days, let's fetch that again. Now we got the 14 days, right? Now we have seven days, we will load that data, it'll then update, as you can see here. So really powerful last 30 days. Look at that. And now the data changes. So it's really cool what we can do with it. Very powerful feature. I do apologize for my recording cutting off. But this was a great video. So I'm going to slice it together the way it makes sense. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that. And I can't wait all the exciting health applications, hopefully compliant health applications. So please don't send the data random places. Um, unless you have user consent, of course, but I can't wait to see all the applications that will be built with this. This is an exciting feature. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for considering Despia as your way to build mobile applications in Lovable. And I can't wait to see all the cool apps that will be built with it. Thank you so much for your time and I wish you a wonderful rest of your day and hopefully see you soon. Take care, bye.